Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Debbie or Cakes and we're back with another beauty video. I've actually been putting on a lot of makeup behind the scenes to film like my reactions and my game reviews and I kind of just want to get back to me sitting in front of my camera putting on some makeup and yapping for like an hour but I cut it down to like 30 minutes. We don't have to talk about it. But today I actually wanted to talk about brushes. Like everyone talks about different techniques you can do to apply your makeup but I don't really see so many people talk about the different types of brushes that you can use and I've actually had this idea to talk about this since I went to Colorado because my sister, my sister only had like two or three brushes and don't get me wrong that's fine but she needed a couple more specifically for her her base and because her current brushes were really old and I was like let me help you okay let me help you and then I was like well if I can help her maybe this video will help someone else out there that's new to makeup you don't really know where to get started you're getting overwhelmed with all this information telling you that you need this and you need that and blah 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 I'm not gonna tell you anything that you need I'm only going to talk about different brushes that you can pick from. I'm going to talk about different types of brushes for different types of application. And at the same time, if you have all of these brushes and you don't use it in the way that I describe, that's okay. That is more than okay. Because half the time, half of these brushes, I don't necessarily use for its intended use. <laughs> or I give it a new use. Okay? So I'm going to show you guys a couple different types of brushes. Especially ones that I really, really like to use let's hop right into the video and I'm gonna be putting on makeup going in with my Smashbox photo finish hydrating under eye primer it's okay like it's not bad I don't think you can get it anymore um, I think Smashbox like discontinued it maybe last year which means I need to hurry up and use this so I can throw away the packaging now the first brush that I'm gonna show you guys is actually something super like specific like it's only used for one thing um, that's how it's marketed but I actually use it for my foundation sometimes when all of my brushes are dirty so I am talking about the elf putty primer applicator brush it's nice and fluffy and then you can also see the end tip where you are supposed to scoop up your primer and apply it and then you just smooth it in and it's great for its intended purpose but when all of my brushes are dirty it's also soft enough that I can buff out my foundation but it's not it's too soft for that as well so be fair warned if you don't have many brushes and you want to use this one to apply your foundation you can but it may take a lot longer simply because the brush is not dense enough, I guess we could say. Put a little right here. But it feels really good on the skin. This primer is fine. It's reaching the end of its cycle life, which is good. It just buffs everything in very nicely. Uh, the bristles are also pretty soft, which is a great bonus. And this is a very specific brush. Um, it's marketed that way. Could you use it for something else? Yes, of course. Now I'm gonna be moving on to foundation. I actually have quite a few foundation brushes now. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of them. Okay, so I think one or two of them are still dirty, but these are a couple different types of foundation brushes this one is shorter but it's also fluffy at the top it's got some density to it this is a real techniques expert face brush um, it's just good for a nice buffing if you like to if you prefer to just buff in your foundation it's really good for that this is an elf brush it is also another buffing foundation brush. I do really like a good buffing foundation brush. This is from Sonia Kushik. This is technically also a buffing brush, but I actually mainly use this for blush now. And then another one that's different from the rest, this is from Joa. This is a flat 
very flat, very dense. It's good for swiping on the foundation and then you can just buff it in from there. I do use this one pretty regularly. For foundation, I don't want to use my Makeup Revolution one. I think I'm, I just want something super simple today. I might go in with my LA Girl Tinted Foundation. This is in the shade Warm Sienna. I think this is still the darkest shade that they have. Um, because mine is pretty old, I think it also tends to oxidize now, which kind of sucks, but it's, it's almost empty, so I'm, I'm not that upset about it. So let me grab my mirror and then we will pick a brush. My favorite thing about this foundation was initially the finish, but also the applicator tip is just really interesting. Uh, but as it got older, it stopped wanting to come out of the bottle. I'm just going to do a light layer. It is just a tinted moisturizer, so you can build it up. Uh, but I don't think it'll ever reach full coverage status. Never mind, I may have to throw this out. Now it doesn't even want to come out of the bottle. I think I'm just going to go in with my e.l.f. buffing brush. I always kind of like to do this with it to make sure that it's spread out properly. I like to always arch it down and then just start to buff it in. So this is just a, a pretty thin layer, but it does a really nice job of evening out my skin tone. I have a lot of acne scarring and scarring from pulling out ingrown hairs right here. I have this really bad mark on my forehead that's covered up just a little bit. And I think I want to go in with another foundation because that one just will not come out of the bottle for some reason. So we are just going to go on top with my Joa BB Cream, which is also almost empty. I may do a product empties video because I've been, I've been going ham. I'm just going to do another light layer. I'm going to zoom through this and we're going to talk about concealer. Okay, so I am going to be going in with two different concealers, and typically if I'm putting on concealer, I just like to go in with the same foundation brush that I've been using. Um, it does help to even out that concealer in case it's a couple shades too light, but at the same time, going in with a foundation brush for a spot that's so small, not necessarily the best idea. So one brush that I do really like to blend out my concealer is this Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. It's got some fluffiness to it. It's not too big, but it's also not too small. Um, some people go in with like a flat brush, completely fine. This is just an option. You do not need this brush. I'm not telling anyone that you need to go buy this. You don't. You may already have something that works for you, and I love that for you. I happen to really like this brush. Another one that I really liked was from Jessup Beauty. I don't know if they exist anymore, but I bought a really big pack of brushes from them a couple years back. Sadly, uh, it came out, but the brush is still fine, and this is another concealer buffing brush. As you can see, these two are, I wouldn't say necessarily identical, but they are essentially the same shape. Very fluffy, but they've got some density to them, which I like. Another thing that you could do is going in with a sponge that happens to have like a teardrop. So then you can get right inside that crease right there. For concealer, I'm going to be going in with my e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. It is in the shade Deep Chestnut. And then I'm also going to be going in with my Maybelline Fit Me in 20 Sand.
Now for the spots around my face, like my forehead and my chin, I will be using my foundation brush. And then for everything else, I will be using one of these concealer brushes. So this is what we're working with right now. And so next we are going to be talking about brushes for powder. There are so many different types of powder brushes that it's actually kind of scary. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you a couple. A lot of them are going to look identical, which means you don't need a million brushes, I promise. Once you find a couple that you really, really like, you can use them for a very long time before you need to replace them. Like when they start to get old, frayed, really used up, the hairs are just pulling out, then it's time to let it go, I promise. Okay, so these are just a couple powder brushes. A lot of them have the same domed shape. They're very big, they're very fluffy um, because it's easier to spread powder around that way. Again, this one is again even bigger, even fluffier. This one is from a BH Cosmetics, I believe it was the Doja Cat collab when they had brushes. This is a Real Techniques 400 brush. It is just, it says it's for blush. You could use this for blush, but I feel like it's a bit too big for me. Um, if you want to spread blush around very quickly, cover more space, this is perfect. But I don't use it for blush. I use it for powder. Another one, this is kind of different only because at the very top, at the very top, it comes to a point. So this is an e.l.f. pointed powder brush. I think this might be the biggest brush that I have for powder. This is from Glam Goth Beauty. I don't know if she still has these stiletto ended brushes, but they're very nice. And then this fan brush, also from that Beach Cosmetics collab. I don't understand the fan brushes. A lot of people use them for like um, highlighter. I do too sometimes, but I think it looks quite bad. So you could use this for some type of powdering or for highlighter. I'm, I'm still figuring out. I feel like it's just a gimmick, but whatever. Another thing that you could use to press in powder in specific places is a beauty blender or just a makeup sponge. This one is easily shaped like a teardrop, but there are so many different types of sponges the same way there are different types of brushes. And lastly, for powder, one thing that I've seen that's become really popular, um, it could have been popular for a while and I just now caught on, but powder puffs are back in fashion, apparently. This is just a really nice triangular shaped powder puff. It's easier to get right here to hit these spots, to hit this corner on the eye and to spread it out. This is really, really good for powder. I have been using this more and more often. Another thing that I actually really like to use for powder is that same concealer brush. Um, because it's so small and it fits right into the really nice spaces, I do like to use that for powder sometimes as well. I am going to be going in with two different types of powders just to powder down my under eye. It's going to crease anyway, but it makes me feel better to do it. First powder I'm going to be going in is with my Banana Brighten Up Powder from Essence. It's one of my 
favorites still to this day. Um, I'm just going to be going in with a little bit with this brush. I just like to lightly tap. Get around my nose. And then I'm going to be going in with a loose powder. I'm going in with my e.l.f. HD powder in Soft Luminance. And so that will kind of be going all over the face. I don't really want to look shiny today. I kind of want to look more matte. And so that should help. And I'm going to be going in with my e.l.f. pointed brush for that. I'm just going to kind of go all over one side. And of course, my forehead. And this is pretty much my base if I'm not doing highlighter, if I'm not doing blush which we will get into next. Okay, so let's now talk about blush brushes. There's so many different ways that you can apply blush. You can also tap it in with your fingers. You can use a sponge, wet or dry, or you can use a brush. So here are a couple different brushes that I would use for blush. As you can see, they have varying shapes, varying sizes. This one is just a Real Techniques face expert brush, which means you could use it for foundation, blush wouldn't really recommend it for highlighter but if that's what you're into why not as you can see it's flat but it's got density it's also very soft and fluffy i got this brush from a friend so i don't know the brand um but it's a bit denser it also spreads out a bit wider than the real techniques brush bh cosmetics doja cat it has a nice domed shape so i like to just apply it in a circle and then the last one is from e.l.f. It is specifically their blush brush. I think this works really good with creams or liquids. Um, it's definitely not as dense as the others. It's a bit thinner. It's got a nice shape. I really like it. Uh, we are going to be going in with a cream blush today because I want to use it up and be done with it. I'm probably not going to get it again. I'm talking about the ColourPop blush sticks in the shade Mic Drop. I don't know if this is still available. I will check and put it on screen and I know you're you're like wait but didn't you powder down I did and I forgot to put on blush and highlighter so we're doing it anyway and then I'm just gonna go in with the elf brush What I will say, I think that it's actually too soft. Like, it's not the worst brush ever for blush. It's pretty good. It doesn't help that I already powdered down. On my nose. The shade also isn't my favorite, but I'm going to go in with a bit more. We're getting there. We're, we're slowly getting there. I'm going to have to use this more often if I want it to be done. not terrible
I'm going to go back in with my foundation brush. Okay, moving right along to highlighter. I do have with me a couple different highlighter brushes that I personally do use. So this is actually just a BH Cosmetics like eyeshadow blending brush, but I love the shape. I love that it's actually very soft. It's not too dense. Um, and so I think that it applies highlighter very, very nicely. Another one is the Super Goofy Fan. I mean, it, it gets the job done, but really, why? <laughs> why? And then I have one of these Glam Goth beauty brushes. This one does have a very interesting diagonal like curve to it. I really like it specifically for highlighter. I think that it applies it really well, but I could probably use this for blush and maybe contouring instead. And then the last one is specifically for highlighter. This is from e.l.f. I actually think that it's a bit big for a highlighting brush. I've tried it a couple times for highlighting. It's not my favorite. It's okay. For highlighter, I am going to be reaching into my recently deceased book from Makeup Revolution and Beetlejuice. It, sadly, it's not available anymore. It has three of the best tones. Um, I think I'm actually just going to go in with this peachy kind of pinky tone in the middle. As for the brush, I think I'll just go in with the little one. Oh, not enough. I think it's really pretty. It's really buildable. I'm probably going to also go over it with my foundation brush just to blend it in a bit better. Oh, good grief. My nose. A little bit more. I think it's really pretty. I am going to put a little bit on my chin. Not too much, not too crazy. And now we are going to get into eyeshadow, which is has probably the most amount of brushes that you could use for different types of application. Um, it can be very daunting, kind of difficult to figure out what brush you need for what? When in all honesty, all of the brushes could be used in a multitude of ways. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple different ones um, and kind of talk about what they're for. Okay, we have an assortment. Let's talk about it. So this first one is from an old BH Cosmetics collection. This is just a super small, not very thick, it's a technically a flat brush. It's very good for applying a single shade and to start to move it around. I wouldn't necessarily say it's good for blending. It's not considered a blending brush, but it is considered a packing brush, which is when you're just packing on color in one spot or slightly across the eye. This one is from Jessup Beauty. Oh, there we go. This is a Lux Petit Crease Brush. So this is specifically for your eye crease. Do I use it for my eye crease? Sometimes. It's very small. This one actually could probably go in the garbage because it's really old. The bristles are kind of hard. <laughs> Not the softest brush in my opinion. Again, this is also just kind of a shorter, slightly flatter brush. It's got a nice dome. Um, it does have a little bit of density to it. It's very good for packing. I would technically also say that you could spread out eyeshadow with it, but I don't th think it's a very good blending brush. Here we've got BH Cosmetics and Doja Cat again. This is a great all over. Like if you're only doing a very basic look and you just need to spread eyeshadow all over the lid, this is great. It's very big, especially for an eyeshadow brush. 
Um, I think you could also probably use this for highlighter. This is a dreaded or appreciated ABH Cosmetics brush. It is a double-sided brush. It's got a very fluffy blending brush on one end and it's got a very short packing brush on the other. This is an even bigger all-over brush. Um, it's very flat kind of dense. The bristles are soft but not too soft. It's really good for just spreading over a shade. This brush is considered a smudger. It's one of the shortest ones that I have. It's short but it's also dense. It's flat. It's great for smudging out eyeshadow or smudging out eyeliner. Um, there's also brushes just for blending, big blending, small blending, petite blending brushes. This itty bitty BH Cosmetics brush is very good for inner corner highlighting or if you're like adding highlighter to the nose. There's so many. There's even more than this. If you draw on your brows, then something like this would be great for you. Most brow brushes will always look like this. They're very flat. They're diagonally curved. They've got that spoolie. So I am going to apply some eyeshadow with the brushes that I just pointed out and um, it'll just be a montage. <laughs> I definitely overdid it with the brows, but I pretty much used my eyebrow pen. I pretty much used my eyebrow brush. I also used my e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil in like black brown. And then I went in with the gel from my Joa Brow Down To Me Dual Brow Pencil and Gel. Again, this one's not my favorite. Their clear gel is so good and I do want to repurchase that. Now I'm gonna be going in with my eyeshadow primer and then we're gonna do a quick eyeshadow look with some of those brushes. I think I'm gonna go in with my ColourPop Cream Shadow in the shade Bronco. It's just a very basic nude. You could use it as just a shadow by itself, but I would never wear that shade alone. Um, and I think that it's a very good Primer. So I'm actually going to go in with that Petit Luxe Crease brush and I'm going to use that to apply my cream. And of course there are actual brushes meant to apply cream shadow too. I might have one or two but I don't remember. There we go, pretty okay shape. I'm very bad at replicating, but we will just do our best. Do they match? Debatable. I think one goes up way too high, but I'm probably going to be able to cover it up uh, with just like some more blush. 
There we go, they match a bit better now. Oh, for my brows, I also went in with my Cream Shop Creamy Gel Eyeliner in brown. They don't sell it anymore, so I just wanna use up this pot and move on. I'm gonna be going in with my Cream Shop Pum Pum Pudding Palette. I actually only want one shade, and it is going to be this Deepest Brown Loyal because I'm also gonna be using an eyeshadow sticks today. Now for that, I kinda of wanna spread it out all over. So I think I'm just going to use this BH Cosmetics like packing brush. Just tap it on. Tap, 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 and then blend. And I want to tap it in kind of harshly, like tap, 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 tap. So then there's less likely to fall out. And nothing you can do when you're applying eyeshadow, especially if it's very powdery, always be sure to just tap. Tap off the excess. It's saving you more product. And you're less likely to get a whole bunch of fallout. I'm just going to pack it down. Now I do want to blend. So for blending, I'm gonna use something like this Luxe Soft Crease. This is from Jessup. It's very long. Um, the bristles are kind of old, a little frayed, but that's fine. I'm gonna dip back into that brown shade just a little bit. I'm gonna hold it at the ends so that I'm using a lighter touch. And then I'm simply going to blend all of that brown to cover up the cream shadow as much as possible. It's okay, I'm not really going for precision. It doesn't have to be like perfect. But I just want to blend it out. If you want, you can clean up with concealer. I'm actually probably gonna clean up with blush. Just a little more. Okay, actually I kind of like, it's, it's more messy in quality than what I would usually do. I kind of like that. I'm still going to clean it up with some blush though. So the same way someone would use highlighter to, oop. so the same way someone would use concealer to clean up, I'm going to use blush because why not? Going back in with that blush brush. And then I'm also going to use this extremely short flat brush to draw on that line even sharper, which I could have done either or. Okay, so I just made them a little bit sharper, nothing too crazy. Also filling in any patchiness I left behind. Okay, I am done with the brown. I'm not going to be doing my under eye. We are going to go in with an eyeshadow sticks and then fix it up with a very small brush. I'm going to be using my ColourPop and Wings Club shadow sticks in the shade Fury of the Dragon. It is the representation of Bloom. It is multi-chrome and I believe it's like pink to a blue. I'm just going to go over that cream shadow. Oops. 
I'm also going to spread it on top of that brown. Okay, so I've packed it on. You can still see the cream shadow quite a bit. So now that I've kind of got on the base, I'm going to be using a brush with this shadow sticks in order to apply it more evenly. And so to do that, I think I actually want to go in with my smudger brush from Jessup because it's not too big it's not too fluffy it'll just pack on where I want the shade to go and see if this will help I don't mind it too much but I think I'm actually gonna apply something on top like another multi-chrome okay that is enough of this eyeshadow sticks what i'm going to be using next is one of my favorite palettes going back in with the yv expressions magical guardian glimmer palette and because i've got that pink and blue shift i think it'd be really fun if i used another one so i think i'm actually going to go in with saturn a little, little bit of saturn possibly on top or maybe even Mercury. We're gonna try Saturn on one eye and the Mercury on the other and I'm gonna go in with my finger first. First reaching into Mercury and tap it right where it meets the brown. Actually yeah that was a good color to pick. Actually, I really like that because you can see the pink to blue shift and then it just shifts fully into blue. So we're going to replicate that on this eye. This is what we're looking like now. And I am going to go in with this itty bitty brush that I love using for my inner corner highlight. And I'm actually going to dip into Saturn. So first, I thought I was going to use this. I actually ended up using mercury which is this one and i think i'm going to put this one in my inner corner i'm going to try it on one eye you can see it at least a little bit i don't want it to be too too much then I think that the brown is very overwhelming so I think I'm actually going to spread out the blue just a little bit more not bad not bad we are not going to be doing anything else for lip liner, I'm just going to quickly go in with my BFF4 ColourPop and Shayla. Okay, so before my camera overheated, I was about to put on my lip liner, but I saw that my eyeshadow sticks was not playing very well with the cream shadow from ColourPop. Ironic, because both were ColourPop. So I actually had to swipe away some of that cream, and then I just reapplied the eyeshadow sticks and the Glimmer Shimmer right on top and I think it looks a lot better less cakey in a way still a little cakey but less so than before I do have a little bit of fallout from the glimmer palette I'm gonna see if I can brush it away with this powder brush if not it's not the end of the world there wasn't much there's still just a little bit and for the most part it is gone this is what we're looking like. I'm gonna put on that lip liner. See, before I was going to apply like a pinky nude, but with blue eyeshadow, I 
I don't like that on me. So we're actually going to swap to something else. I'm actually going to reach for this 3CE um, Velvet Lip Tint in Taupe. It's probably my favorite shade. I'm going to blend it into that brown. That's also kind of a bit much. Let me see if I can lighten that with my other 3CE. It is in Pink Break. Maybe I can... Maybe I can make like an ombre? No, I feel like it made it this really weird color. I think the red is too much. I'm going to come back with a blank slate. Okay, I'm back. I've reapplied that lip liner. I'm actually just going to go over everything with my NYX Butter Gloss in Ginger Snap. I'm quickly realizing I don't have a brown lipstick anymore. That's crazy to me. I do like this a bit more than the red. I think that I kind of don't want to add eyeliner. I'm going to use whatever's left and just blend this over top the blue. Yeah, I don't think I want to add eyeliner. But I will spray down. Oh, you're empty. Sad. <laughs> I will save you for a product empties video. All right, you've got some juice left. I just used my NYX Matte Finishing Spray. It's not my favorite, but it does get the job done. I think I want to put on a wig, so I will be right back, and then we can finish up this video. Okay, this is the final look. I even swapped into my favorite Dead Space shirt and my PTA mom wig that I will pull out on occasion. <laughs> but this is the final look. I decided no eyeliner just because I feel like this is already so bold and I do actually like the brown with it better now that I've, I've had it on my face for a while. But I hope that this video is able to help someone kind of decide what brushes do you want for your collection? What brushes do you need for your collection? Again, a lot of people are going to be like, this is the brush that you need. I'm only here to tell you that there are so many different kinds of brushes that you can use for different forms of application. You can use multiple brushes for the same application. It's cheaper that way, saves you money that way. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use your hands. That's free 99. You can use a puff, a cushion. You know, there's so many different types of ways that you can apply your makeup. And the main purpose is just have fun with it. Um, a lot of people now are like, you need this and it's a way for them to shill it to you and I'm here to tell you, no you don't. No you don't. Especially if that price is not right, don't do it. Don't do it. There are so many cheaper alternatives like e.l.f. brushes, um, BH brushes, Real Technique brushes. <laughs> That is it for my video today. I hope everybody's having a wonderful summer and please stay hydrated. Bye.